Just a quick question. Are you on the tea side or coffee side? I'm all on the tea side. Tea was given to us by Britishers and just like always, Britisher doesn't just give us tea, there is a little bit more given to us by them. I'm gonna talk a little bit more on to that in this video. First, let me give you a fair warning. This video, yes, it is related to tech, it is also related to marketing, but this is gonna be a little bit boring video because I'm gonna be sitting all up here and will be discussing you an important case study. If you have the patience, sit here. If you don't have the patience, leave right now, that would be better for all of us. Okay, sorry for being so much blunt here, but I would be more blunt in the remaining uh, part of the video. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And all I want to start here is by asking you a simple question. Is gambling legal? Now, before you answer this question, you need to understand that this is not a complete question because what gambling is all about, you need to ask a proper question for that. For example, if I ask you standing in Las Vegas that is gambling legal? Of course, that is legal there. What about India? Is gambling legal here or not? It all depends on where you are standing again, because the law is not like portraying gambling as black or white. It's still a whole lot of gray area. Let me bring you down into the first case study and then I'll move you into the second case study as well. In 1998, British gave us a little bit more. A very famous game show created by uh, David Briggs and Steve Knight came into the picture. The show was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now this show got really, really popular in 1998, but it got even much more popular after that. After soon enough, this show was brought to America. And as you know, Americans really know how to do marketing. And in 1999, this show went to America and got insane amount of popularity and never looked back. Now, soon after that, Indians realized that we should also bring this game to India. And soon after that, in 2000, a really remarkable thing happened. For the very first time, the biggest name in the industry, Amitabh Bachchan, was coming to TV. I was all excited at that time and the show was transformed into a name because here we don't understand a million and especially at that time million was not really a common word. Now it is with the YouTube. But the show was transformed with the name of Khan Banega Karodpati which is almost equivalent to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Now this show was really really one of the most popular hit in India. But not only that, a lot of questions came with this show. Questions like, is it gambling? And obviously, in defense to this particular show, the producers of this show stated the fact that first, the money is flowing only in one direction. And in order to have a gambling, you need to put something at the stake, some money or maybe something else. So money is always flowing from one direction in this show. The second thing is that this is not a game of chance. This is a game of skill. Now, these two facts were really, really honored by everybody and then the show got clearance that it is not a gambling show with these two things. Now, eventually after that, keep note on my fact that another argument was presented in this show that it is a skill-based game. So before we move further, we need to understand what is the situation of gambling in India. In India, the gambling is divided into majorly two parts, the game of skills and game of chance. Game of chance is majorly like not really accepted too much. But here's the thing that the Gambling Act is really, really complex in India. It's like Gambling Act of 1867, which is really old. But after that, there was also another law, which is the Adoption of Laws 1950. This actually allows you to adopt some of the laws by center. Sometimes you get more control if you are in the state. So we can see that this narrowed down of the ju jurisdiction was opted by Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi and Punjab. And there is a lot more going on in here. There is a special law by West Bengal Gambling and Prize Competition Act 1957. Then there is a Kerala Gambling Act, the Jammu and Kashmir Gambling Act. And then on top of that, there is a Goa Daman and Dew Gambling Act, the Sikkim Regulation Gambling Act. So as you know, the state have modified this law based on where you are. So gambling is legal or not is, is really a gray area right now in India. Now on top of that, you need to understand one more thing. Now, whether you think that gambling is legal or not, let me tell you a fact about the gambling, which you might have also heard your parents or elderly people saying that. That in the gambling, the first person or second person never wins. The only person who wins is the house. And owner of these casinos and house eventually get ridiculously rich, like ridiculously rich. 
And obviously, what they do after becoming ridiculously rich, they try to have their lobby strong. They try to have connection with the people who are strong. And it depends on which country you are, because in some countries, politicians are ridiculously powerful, and in some countries, the sportsperson are ridiculously powerful, and sometimes other people. And in some other countries, all of them have their equal powers. But these owner of these houses and these casino owners try to make their lobby really strong and try to grab as much as connections that they can possibly have with either politicians, with either sportsperson and probably other third parties as well. A few years passed by and in India we saw a really really great wave of geo where internet was available in every single hand. After that, somebody somebody realized that there is an act which can be a little bit modified or we can honestly say that there is a loophole here that if the game is skill based then it's not going to be called as gambling so just hooking on just one single statement a whole lot of gambling apps flooded in india of course google saw that and a whole lot of these apps are not available in the google store because they see that very clearly that these are gambling apps Yet, these gambling apps are available and are marketing insanely all over the India. Okay, this brings us to the next case study that we're going to have. For this next case study, I'm not going to be naming any one of them. I'm going to be just using capital letters. One is E. E is an educational company which made ridiculous claims that you can get 150 crores of package by learning programming and stuff. You know what I'm talking about. So we're going to call this one as E for educational company. And another company is going to be G. And yes, I'm going to be a little bit blunt here. I'm not going to call you as skill based gaming app. I'm going to just bluntly call you as gambling app. Now pay close attention to both of these companies because the marketing tactics of these companies are going to lay down that how their future or their fate is going to lie. Now remember, both of these companies are having insane amount of deep pocket and they can just buy any celebrity or endorser that they can possibly have. Now first, the E company, the education company. This educational company put out first a whole lot of ridiculous ads that you can get 150 crores of package or something like that. But this company went on to the traditional steps of marketing. They hired a whole lot of industry veterans, these actors, the sport person, everybody knows them. And they went on to this path of hiring these powerful influencers, paying them crores and crores of amount of rupees so that they can back that. Yes, my kids are learning from this app or my kid is learning from the same company so that whole lot of more audience can actually sync with them. On the other hand, this G company, which is arguably a skill based app. Now, the marketing technique of this company was a little bit different. They didn't straightforwardly hired these heavy influential people, but rather they went into the path that who is the modern influencer? Of course, YouTubers. So they throw up insane amount of money to these YouTubers. All of your favorite YouTubers, you might have seen them uh, putting out that, hey, try this app. You can just have this amount of rupees at the first download and then you can use your skills to play this game and can win. And you can also transfer that using Paytm or PhonePay or whatever they are, the resource they are offering. Now, since these YouTubers were having a great amount of audience, especially the kids that were very, very malleable, they were very influential that, yeah, this is common. This is normal. I can have this gambling app. It's not a gambling app. It's a skill based app. So eventually a whole lot of kids downloaded this app. Now, on the one side, we are seeing that this educational company is seeing so much of resistance because they try to manipulate the kids. Nobody liked that on social media. On LinkedIn, there is so much of a pose of that. On Instagram, on YouTube, there is so much of a pose of that. But on the other side, when these YouTubers are saying that it's totally okay to have these gambling apps in your phone and these are my sponsors, it's totally okay right now. Now look at the path here. One company choosing the traditional marketing things and other company first going into choosing the big time YouTubers and paying them money that promote my app. Although this app is not available on Google store, I will not tell you the reason, but you can ask your audience to directly download this app from this link. On one hand, we are seeing so much of opposition. On the one side, we are seeing nothing at all. It seemed as totally normal. Not only that, what surprises me that even initially, they started with the small time YouTubers and now they are hiring some of the biggest name in the YouTube industry in India. And it is considered as totally normal. Now, since let me tell you, the amount that these company offers is ridiculously high. Like when I saw the offer, it was ridiculously lucrative offer 
to say no. And of course, the money part was really, really good. Now, what I see up here is that these companies are hiring all these YouTubers, but not only that, they have already moved on the step two. The step two is to hire all these amazing influential sports player as well as the film star and actors, and they have already hired them. Now, both of them are acting as their brand ambassadors, the big time sportsmen, the big time actors, and the big time YouTubers, and no opposition on top of that. Now, it is not all bad on the YouTube side. Some of the YouTubers have openly come in forward and said, I don't do, I don't promote gambling apps. We know that some of them are there. But again, I, what I want to ask you is a simple question, that as an audience, it is also your role to make sure that these YouTubers don't take such kind of offers and you ask them question. Now, putting hate on these YouTubers or anything is not gonna do any justice. As an audience, you should go and politely say to these YouTubers that, hey, I love your content, but you should really not get involved with these kinds of gambling apps because we all know in the gambling, neither the first person wins, neither the second person wins, only the house wins. Now this brings on to the conclusion of our second case study that how, if you're choosing the traditional tactics for marketing, it is putting up a whole lot of questions on you when your business practices are questionable. On the other hand, when either, and on the second hand, we are seeing that business practices are definitely questionable, but nobody is putting a question till now. Now these companies, not once, not twice, but actually more than 10 times, reached me out, different companies, with a ridiculous amount of sums saying, hey Tej, would you like to promote our app? We can do this much of amount of money or this much amount of money. I didn't bother to even reply to them. But what got my interest is when somebody yesterday messaged me on Instagram saying that, hey Tej, I got selected for this big, gigantic, skill-based company. I will be doing DevOps things there and I'm not pretty sure to join this company or not because my morals say is that I shouldn't be associated with that company, but the offer that they are making me to join as a software engineer is really high. So if you can just put a word to me in the message, that will clear up my guilty conscience to join this company or not. And to that, I would say, I don't have an answer for this one. I'm not here to say anything is right or anything is wrong. It's all up to you. It's all about where you are standing right now, in which state you are. Things can be really in the point of good, bad, legal or illegal, but it's all about your beliefs, what you really believe. If you think that something is wrong, it just is wrong. You don't need to back it by laws or anything. It can be really wrong just like that. So again, I am here to just make sure that you are aware of the situation which is going on right now. And it's time that you act a little bit. Ask questions politely. Put it in the comment section if you see such kind of promotion, if you can.